Hey there everyone, welcome to Poetry on Plastic. My name is Michael. Today we're going to be doing another video in my Pacific Postcard series that takes a deep dive into Japanese pop and rock the last 50 years. And today we're going to be talking about one song and one song only. A song recorded in 1971 by an artist named Yosui Inoue. The song is Kasaganai. So if I got my editing right, hopefully what you saw just now is a compilation of various artists covering this song along with hopefully some footage of Yosui Inoue playing it himself. This is a song from the 1970s that was hugely influential in Japanese pop music. Its importance intersected Japanese music in a number of ways. It helped to establish the burgeoning folk rock movement in Japan. It also um, took place at kind of a political crossroads in Japan, and it just had a huge impact on um, Japanese pop and Japanese culture, not just for that decade, but for you know the next 40 years. There are still, if you go to you know music bars in Japan, you are still going to find people covering this song. It is a song that is is ubiquitous in Japanese culture, is a song like Bob Dylan's "The Times They Are a Change in R." In the United States. So who is Yosui Inoue and you know what makes his music so special? So Yosui Inoue was born in 1948 in Fukuoka, Japan. Um, he was born as Akimi Inoue and he is one of the most storied solo artists in um, Japanese music. Uh, he has sold over 10 million albums and he's had a 40-year career. Um, one of his signatures is you know in this single and his debut album um, he hasn't adopted it yet, but through, for pretty much the rest of his career from 1973 onward, he would be known for always wearing dark sunglasses pretty much no matter where he is, even if it makes it impossible to see. He is the dark sunglasses folk singer. When he was growing up in Japan in the 1960s, you know, one of his big influences was the Beatles. As I talked about in my last video, the Beatles came to Japan in 1966 and played at the Nippon Budokan. And they, that performance and um, you know, the Beatles' arrival in Japan set off a huge cultural musical shift. Um, and that's how we got the group sounds bands in the 1960s. But Yosui uh, Inoue came, came at a time when um, sounds were shifting in Japan and the folk movement and particularly the folk rock movement was kind of making a appearance in Japan in the early 70s. The Beatles kicked off Inoue's uh, interest in rock music and folk music and, and becoming a solo musician. Um, he debuted as a solo folk artist in 1969 under the name Andre Kandre. Uh, he recorded uh, a couple singles with a uh, folk band called Rokumonsen, uh, which was a folk group active from about 68 to 72. 
But in 1971, Inoue got picked up by Polydor Records, and he began working on his debut solo album. He changed his stage name to Yosui Inoue, and um, the album that he was working on is this album right here called Danzetsu. Uh, a rough translation of uh, Danzetsu in English would be uh, like discontinuity. Um, that's the best translation I could find for it. So this is an album that got recorded in the early months of 1972. His backing band for this album was a band we've actually talked about on the channel before, and that was the blues rock band The Mops. Um, I have here, this is a compilation of rare tracks uh, and b-sides by The Mops on Liberty Records, and um, the song we're talking about today, Kasaga Nai, that The Mops played on Inoa's album, is actually on this, sung and performed purely by the Mops. So Kasaga Nai, even right when the song came out, Kasaga Nai was already getting covered, if not by the band that played it on the album. So on this album, Danzetsu, Inoue wrote the music, but um, a lot of the arrangements, the instrumental arrangements, were done by Mops guitarist uh, Katu Hoshi. The first single from this album, Danzetsu, came out about a month before the album was released. It was Jinsei ga Nido Areba, uh, roughly translates to if we could live again or if we could have a, another life. Um, that came out as a single. The album came out May 1st, 1972. And uh, the single we're going to be talking about today, Casa Ganai, came out one month after that in July. However, it became the, um, the big hit from the album. It became what uh, Inoue was known for. So this album, Danzetsu, launched a huge career for Inoue. I mean, he's recorded pretty much an album almost every year since then. Um, he's still performing today. Even though Danzetsu was his big breakout hit, the album he's probably no most known for is his third album that came out in 1973. Kori no Sekai, which roughly translates to Ice World, which is this album right here. This album was the first LP in Japan to sell over a million copies. And I do really enjoy this album. It, it is a great album. It has a lot more production money put into it, but I honestly prefer a little bit the more raw approach of Danzetsu. You know, to me, um, I think this album is just perfect. I don't think there's a clunker on it. However, Kasuganai is really the standout hit on this. It's the last track on the last side of the album. He's, he saved the best for last. So let's talk a little bit about what makes this song so good other than that it's a great piece of music. So I actually first heard about this song in the mid 2000s. I had an album, I had an MP3 album on my iPod, I remember. I was listening to a lot of the, the Japanese rock band Muku at the time. Um, I still really love their work, it's just I don't love their more recent albums. But the, the, you know, some of those mid-2000s Muku albums are just absolutely fantastic. And one album that I found on the internet was their cover album. Um, it was called Cover Parade. And on that album, they covered, you know, with their signature kind of hard rock style, they covered a number of songs, both from their peers, but also songs that they were in, that clearly they were influenced by in their youth. Um, you know, a lot of songs from the 70s and 80s. And one of the songs that really struck me was this, this slow ballad on here that was called Kasaka Nai. And actually, it took me a couple years to like have the curiosity to go look up this song. And that's how I stumbled upon Yosui Inoue. But it wouldn't be the last time I would hear covers of this song. Um, the next time I heard this on an actual, on a record that I actually bought, was um, the more recent album that came out in 2019. Uh, by the solo artist Kiyoharu. This is his covers album. And on this, he also covers Kasaganai. Um, and there are countless other artists that have released commercial covers of this song. So, how did this song get so big? What made this song such a cultural force? Well, besides the musical elements, um, this song was recorded, and this album was recorded um, in early 1972. And what was going on in Japan in early 1972 is the death of the student protest movement, particularly a political event that happened in February of 1972 called the Asama Sanso incident. Basically, what happened with the Asama Sanso incident was there were factions of um, radical uh, militant communist terrorists, essentially, uh, in, operating in Japan at that time that had grown out of the student protest movement that 
took hold in the late 60s in Japan. As I'm sure all of you know, the late 60s, pretty much around the world, was a very turbulent time in the United States, in Europe, um, in other places across the world. There was a lot of youth-led student protest movements going on, but they were all kind of, even though there was a lot of general themes around them, there was it was all led by young people, generally, um, generally by people on the socio and economic left. Um, there were still a lot of key differences in places. You know, the student movement in the United States and the opposition to the Vietnam War was very different than the protest movements that emerged in other parts of the world. Like, for instance, in West Germany, a lot of the, the protest movements were actually very much um, pro-East German, and there was a lot of terrorism involved with some of the radical left student groups in the early 70s in West Germany. And kind of a similar thing happened in Japan. It, it's, it's interesting, and I, I don't have time to give an entire relay of the Japanese student protest movement. Um, funny enough, it started over tuition increases. Most of the early protests in the 60s in Japan uh, at universities were about tuition increases and also mismanagement of the universities. Um, the, the bureaucracy of the university system in Japan was, was pretty poorly run at that time. So there was a lot of uh, legitimate grievances that kind of spiraled into social issues. Um, one of the main social issues was opposition to um, terms of treaties with the United States that the government of Japan was renewing at that time. Um, and there was a number of reasons for opposition to this. Um, it, it was kind of weird because on the one hand, a lot of the opposition to Japan's partnership with, with the United States ran concurrent with a lot of leftist issues like um, especially the United States in, uh, growing involvement in the Vietnam War. What people see is the United States um, economic and military imperialism at that time and those are kind of traditional leftist issues but there were also there was also like a lot of nationalism involved in that um, uh, there was definitely some strains of Japanese society that was definitely a, still quite opposed to um, you know the dearmament of that was signed at the end of World War II that was continued by that was you know continually ratified by the Japanese government and upheld in uh, continuations of these treaties my point is um, the student protest movement at that time was not quite as simple as it might have been in the United States. It was mostly a peace movement in uh, reaction to the Vietnam War. Uh, the protest movement in Japan was a bit more complicated, and, it, and towards the end of its life, it did get quite radical and quite violent. Um, a lot of these student protest movements splintered off into um, armed terrorist groups, Probably the most infamous armed terrorist group was a faction called the United Red Army, which was a, which is a group that formed out of the combination of a couple of different uh, leftist terrorist organizations in Japan. And learning about this has been kind of, um, kind of interesting. There's a really great channel on uh, on Japanese music that talks about the relation of this song to the end of the student protest movement. Um, the channel name is Words and Music of Japanese Pops, um, and that seeing that video on this song, I'll, I'll link it in the video description, was kind of the inspiration for me to make this video and to find out a little bit more about the student protest movement and kind of its, its violent end. Um, so anyway, a string of violent terrorist attacks, um, increasingly radical militant student activity in the early part of the 70s kind of culminated in something called the Asama Sanso incident. The Asama Sanso incident was when the United Red Army, after, um, which was at this point quite a small organization of about like 30 people essentially, escaped authorities, hit out in the mountains, purged like 11 to 18, I, something about like 15 of their members, half of their members, um, they did a violent purge of uh, under the guise of self-criticism. Um, and there's actually a really interesting movie about it that I'm going to talk about, but they performed this violent purge of their, where they murdered their own members, and then they, um, when authorities were closing in on them, they, uh, when they were fleeing, they ended up taking a bed and breakfast in a remote mountain town hostage, uh, holding the innkeeper hostage, and there was a multi-day multi standoff with police that resulted in a number of deaths. Um, they were all apprehended. The multi-day standoff between police and this armed leftist group was uh, one of the first big uh, crime events that was broadcast uh, live on Japanese TV. Seeing the violence from this event along with a um, airport bombing 
that happened uh, just a month later really shook Japanese society and it, it pretty much completely ended the student protest movement and, and kind of changed the society both socially and culturally. If you want to learn more about this incredibly niche part of Japanese history, I recommend checking out a film that was done in 2007 called uh, United Red Army. It was directed by Koji Wakamatsu, and uh, if you've never heard of Koji Wakamatsu, he might be most famous for being the producer of the incredibly controversial uh, Japanese film In the Realm of the Senses. I'm going to let you look that one up on your own. But um, this film that came out in 2007, you know, I was surprised by this because I started watching it and honestly, the first half hour, 45 minutes of it, um, I almost didn't finish it because it, it starts off very campy. Um, the, the cinematography isn't really anything to write home about and the performances in the beginning felt a little bit soap opera-y, but this is a three hour movie. So as it progressed, um, it got more and more intense and darker and darker. And um, I don't want to, I mean, this is based on a true story. It uses the names of real people that actually existed. And it's a fairly faithful retelling of the event with some dramatization thrown in. But um, I highly recommend checking this out, United Red Army. Um, anyway, so the Osama Sanso incident happened in February of 1972, while Inoue was recording this album, particularly the song Kasaganai. Now, the song Kasaganai, uh, the tr English translation of that title is um, Without an Umbrella, or I Don't Have an Umbrella. And it is not a song directly about the Asama Sanso incident or the student protest movement in Japan. It's not a protest song. But it is, I think most people in Japan culturally consider it to be a reaction to those events. Um, I'm gonna read the first uh, stanza of the, the song for you. The English translation uh, goes, In the city, the cases of young people committing suicide are overflowing. It said in a small notice in the morning newspaper. But really, the real problem is the rain today. I don't have an umbrella. The chorus is, I have to go. I have to go and see you. I have to go to your town getting wet in the rain. So if you actually look at the lyrics of this song, it's not really about these events at all, but it kind of is. Um, Kasaganai is widely seen, um, at both at the time and, and still now, as a, a response to the turbulence of this period, particularly the Asama Sanso incident. It's about directing your focus on your loved ones, uh, to care for what really matters, and also about the societal problems that can drive a wedge between families, between friends, between lovers. The rain here is the, the rain and the bad news and the people talking about the important social issues on the television, these are all things that can come between you and the people that you love, um, can come between you and your own life and livelihood and happiness. And so it's not necessarily a song that's looking inward, but it's a song that's looking towards closer connections than kind of grandiose political machinations or large-scale social movements. It's a song about interpersonal relationships. To me, Kasaganai uh, is not only a brilliant uh, song musically, but it's, it's a song that is lyrically crying out for intimacy in a cold and harsh world. The great news about Kasaganai and Danzetsu for vinyl collectors is that um, these are incredibly common and inexpensive albums to obtain. So. If this type of folk rock music interests you, um, and if this video interested you at all, I highly recommend at least picking up the single. This song is fantastic. It has pervaded Japanese rock music and pop music for the last 40, 50 years. Um, and I think it will continue to do so. It's a fantastic song. Um, so definitely check it out and look for more. Uh, videos on Japanese uh, rock and pop music uh, in more Pacific Postcard videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers. Yes.
sakica Shimbuno Katasumini Kaite Ita Dakedo Yeah. 